best drawing tablets. Ooh! Ooh, wow. Nope. Hmm. Hey everyone, today we're going to review the Artist 22 R Pro which is a top-of-the-line drawing tablet by XP Pen. They were so kind to send me one for free, but I'm free to give my completely unbiased review. So let's unbox it and see how it works from the perspective of an artist. Let's check what's inside the box. Ooh. Of course, we have a manual and a warranty card. I already own such a glove, I can't help but I have very sweaty hands in summer and with a glove my hand doesn't stick to the screen all the time. And this little guy is a pen holder. We also get a cleaning glove. Here is the power cord which can be connected either with an adapter for US sockets or with an European one. A USB-C to USB-A connector and a USB-C to USB-C. Here we have a medieval VGA to VGA connector. And of course HDMI to HDMI. This is a pen box, which works as a pen holder at the same time. It contains a battery-free stylus with 60 degree tilt recognition and more than 8000 levers of pressure sensitivity. On the back side we have 8 replacement nips for the stylus tip. But honestly I never changed mine from my last XP pen tablet and I used that for about a year. I broke my iPad stylus already and had to replace it so I'm happy they deliver an extra pen here. And now let's unpack that big display with 21.5 inch work area and 1080p resolution. It has a pre-installed anti-glare screen protector, but I have to say I found some bubbles here and there. However, they do not disturb and they only occur at the borders where there isn't even an input possible. If I would have applied the foil myself, it would definitely be worse. Super nice for left-handers, the tablet has 10 shortcut keys and a dial on each side. To begin with, it's not written in the manual how to apply the pen holder and it's not obvious to come up with the idea to pull off this rubber thingy here to apply the holder. However, what's practical is that you can apply it to the left side or to the right side. The 22R Pro comes with a metal stand that can be steplessly adjusted. I like how robust it feels. I use a MacBook with a USB-C port so I use this kind of connection. Therefore, I need to connect the USB-C cable to my laptop and to the display. The power cord is also necessary. To turn the tablet on, it has a touch button on the top and several other buttons to open a screen menu, for example to change the brightness. In the next step, one has to download the drivers from the XP Pen website. Windows, Mac and Linux are all three supported. With the drivers comes the XP Pen software that allows you to program the stylus buttons, the shortcut keys and the two dials. But don't be afraid, programming doesn't really mean programming, but just assigning keyboard button shortcuts like command Z for undo. The tablet should be calibrated from beginning, but if you feel like there's a need to recalibrate, then this can be done in the pen software as well. Oh, and by the way, I tried using the display with my friend's old Windows laptop and it worked without any issues. We tried also Linux and it worked too. Screen mirroring for the iPad worked as well, but be aware that you then can use the stylus for that. Some phones are also supported, but mine didn't really work. Maybe there might be a workaround though. If you have any experience with that, then let us know in the comments. To test the tablet thoroughly, I created a fully rendered illustration on it. And it took me quite some time since I wasn't used to Clip Studio anymore. And the fact that I usually do stuff with touch gestures was also difficult. You can only use the stylus, not your fingers on the screen. But in the end I got used to everything and I'm very happy with the final drawing. The stylus has a very fine tip which allows precise working and it is very lightweight and feels great in the hand. The pen pressure sensitivity feels not too sensitive as you have to press a little harder than I'm used for example for my iPad and even with the least steep settings the pressure curve still feels very steep and as a result it feels somewhat unsensitive but sensitive at the same time if that makes sense. It's also worth noting that the stylus on a 60Hz display will also always feel a bit more leggy than on a 120Hz display like my iPad Pro has. Nonetheless, I got used to that difference very quickly. And overall, I really like that pen. 
Now, can we talk about how huge this display is? The whole thing weighs about seven kilos, so you won't carry this around with you. It's more intended like a computer display you have always on your desk. And that's also what you can use it for as a normal computer monitor. There is a little gap between the point where the pen touches the screen and where the point occurs. It's because the more affordable pen tablets always come with an extra glass layer over the actual display, therefore they have this little gap. While more expensive ones come with a laminated display instead, therefore you won't see it as much. But you will definitely get used to that. And when you're looking from above, like most of the time while drawing, then you won't notice it at all. What's a big plus, this tablet has almost completely no diagonal line you there, which often occurs on cheap drawing tablets. The brightness is not bad. It definitely is enough to work with. It has an IPS panel with about 250 nits. Here's a comparison with my MacBook, which really has a high-end panel and about 400 nits. In my opinion, the contrast is good too, although the matte screen protector makes drawings look a little bit more washed out. But compared to my iPad, the contrast looks quite similar. The default color profile of the screen is set to Artist 22R Pro, what I love for the vibrant colors, but that can also mean that drawings you make with this screen settings can look a little less vibrant on other displays. And like I told you in another video, I prefer the color profile sRGB 2.1 for that. It is still the most common one in displays. If you look at XP Pen's website, then you can get confused very easily, as they have three different 22 drawing tablets available. On the first glance, they all look very similar. And that's why I made a list for you with the main differences, so you don't have to. We have the Artist 22 Second, the 22E Pro, and mine the 22R Pro. Mine is about $100 more expensive than the others. What disappoints me is the 22E Pro stylus, because it has a battery and needs to be recharged, and it also lacks a tilt sensor. There are also some more differences, but I won't go into all of them now. Here you go with the table. I love my iPad, but I also love Clip Studio Paint Pro and it is definitely not made for iPad OS. So overall this tablet found its place in the middle of my working area. There's another very similar tablet on the market for similar price and specs. It has no shortcut keys, but on paper it has a slightly better screen because it's laminated. Unfortunately, I never had the chance to buy any Huion product yet, so I can't tell much about their build quality. If you have any experiences with Huion, then please let us know in the comments. I hope this was helpful for you to make up your choice and thanks for watching the video until this point. See you next time!